Hey there, Internet. Welcome to the Hard On Gear channel, where I discuss and review my used and abused knives and gear. So it's been about two years since I picked up my Manix 2 Spyderco, my first Spyderco, actually. It's got... Oh, looks like it might have a little bit of blood on it. Somebody might have cut themselves with this thing yesterday because it is absolutely terrifyingly sharp. Anyways, uh, Manix 2, as you notice, has another Manix 2 underneath it, the Manix 2 Lightweight, which is the new Spyderco that I picked up, a uh, knife that I got off a of trade with King of N's YouTube name, uh, the uh, Spyderco, no, sorry, Benchmade Griptilian is what I traded this guy for. Uh, this is my favorite knife design, the Manix 2, so uh, when King of Ends messaged me on Instagram, asked me if I wanted to trade my Griptilian for a lightweight Manix 2, I was kind of over the moon about it. I'd planned on picking one up for quite a while, and it's been on my list of things to pick up. But so many knives, so little dollars, and uh, since I've already got the Manix 2, there was a lot of other knives I had to try out. The similar model of that Manix 2 uh, was going to be later on in my purchases. However, sometimes things just work out, and now I've got a knife that's probably going to be in my pocket. I'd say more than 90% 90, 90 of my other knives. Uh, the Super Freak, the uh, Paramilitary 2 couple of knives like that that'll still probably be uh, big competitors but i have a feeling this is going to be like top three most used folding knives in the near future the manix 2 i don't know how much pocket use that's going to get it's still a, 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 a uh, what's the word i'm looking for a joy rather to uh, sit and fidget, fidget around with the weight of the full weight version at uh, five ounces feels really nice in the hands it's balanced extremely well it feels like a quality well-built knife manix 2 lightweight doesn't feel quite as sturdy, doesn't feel quite as expensive, but it's, uh, well, half the weight, uh, 2.6 ounces or something like that. It's it's two and a half ounces, give or take, uh, literally half the weight of the full size or the full weight version. I don't know why I keep wanting to call it full size, but the regular version with the full stainless steel liners. This, I don't know if you can see, I was going to say as you can see, but uh, has no stainless steel liners has a full closed back design so i couldn't show you like i was hoping to there uh blow through in the full regular manix i keep wanting to call it that uh, lanyard hole you can see the nice stainless steel uh whatever in there stainless steel finish all over the place looks really nice looks really shiny not quite as pretty on this all about function and the lightweight design so these frn handles are still super or handle scales rather are still super sturdy do they need the stainless steel liners in there? Probably not, especially for uh, as beefy of a knife this is as this is compared to other Spydercos. I mean, this, the Shaman, uh, a few others, the Caribbean's pretty tough too. That's been recommended to me a few times. But these are really some of the tougher knives for Spyderco. And uh, the extra stainless steel liners almost overkill. It's probably going to fail in maybe the blade area or maybe the ball bearing lock before it ever fails in the handle i would think but hopefully i'll never find out maybe i will you will be the first to know but maybe at some point i'll try the uh large uh what's it called the manix 2 xl yeah uh, which is about the size of a recon one at about nine inches this regular manix size being about eight inches overall uh yeah so imagine the manix 2 just about recon one size and then you'll have a pretty good idea uh, and one day, maybe I'll get my hands on that. I'm probably going to be trying the Yojimbo Yojumbos first, which are kind of similar in size comparisons. The Yojimbo being about this size, the Yojumbo being about that size. Both Warncliffe uh, compression lock, Michael Janus designs, produced by Spyderco. More tactical self-defenses type knives, but also kind of cool for utilitarian EDC work with that Warncliffe blade. But yeah, keep an eye out for those in the future. Those have been on my list for a long time. But uh, Manix 2 Lightweight. One of the absolute coolest things about this knife is the way it fits into your hand, or at least my hand, the ergonomics, the front forward uh, finger choil there that's all jimped out, the jimping on the top, the jimping on the bottom, the jimping all around. Uh, a little bit less, I guess, on the lightweight version, still a little bit on the inside FRN scales, not quite as aggressive as the metal on the uh, stainless steel liners on the regular version. But still, super grippy. Uh, doesn't feel like it's going to slip out of your hand, even in the slightest. And the FRN uh, texturing is extremely grippy. I can't remember what they call it. Whatever this, like, grenade pineapple, whatever pattern is, that kind of, like, uh, yeah, pushes against your finger as you go to grip. So, super awesome from Spyderco. Uh, the steel. 
BD1. It's not nearly as fancy as S30V, S35V, and anything like that. However, it holds a hell of an edge. It's super easy to sharpen, takes as good of an edge as any blade steel I've ever sharpened so far. And let me just see if I can... Ha. Ha. Whew. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't always work as well on camera when I say that there's a scary edge on something, but uh, this thing here is, yeah, ready to go. So BD1 holds a heck of, or sorry, takes a heck of an edge. Will it hold the edge as well? We're going to find out. The uh, blade steel chart scores a little bit lower on edge retention and toughness for BD1. Super stainless, super uh, easy to sharpen. But people have said it holds a fine enough edge for typical stuff. I don't know. Somewhere is maybe in the ballpark of like 420 HC on a buck knife or something like that. But yeah, uh, we'll find out. Uh, pretty good work knife. That's mostly what it's going to be. Well, I say mostly a work knife, but it's going to get used for ADC and all other kinds of stuff. Wow. All kinds of other stuff. Words can be heard. The Benchmade uh, M4 Freak is going to get just as much pocket time as it ever has as far as like EDCing, just if I'm kind of out and about in jeans and a t-shirt. Working, doing anything where I want like a nice tough waterproof knife. My, uh, <laughs> where is it? Oh, there's the LC200 and Pacific Salt 2 still in the bag. So I had a little bit of a screw loss and uh, disassembly issue and I got to get that dealt with. I just haven't really had the time or put the time into it yet, but that's still got to get dealt with and I'll see if Spider Co can help me out with that. But uh, that's one that's in my pocket quite a bit for work. This is going to be in the same realm where it's mostly waterproof and pretty tough and pretty light which is something I value more and more as I get lighter, awesomer knives. Because I used to carry this nice 5 point whatever, 5.2 ounce, maybe 5.3 ounce Recon 1 for a long, long, long time. Many years, and I got used to carrying a big heavy knife, but I've been spoiled by these lighter fellas. So nowadays, I tend to carry something more in the 2 or 3 ounce realm. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I've been carrying the Cold Steel Code 4 quite a bit. Carried that for a week or two. That thing's still got mostly just the factory edge, which I've touched up. And again, just for the sake of removing the rest of my arm hair. Yeah, just having fun sitting around touching up some of these already fairly sharp knives. But uh, S35VN OS8 on the old Recon 1, because that's a 10-year-old knife at this point. But yeah, uh, let's do some size comparisons while these guys are out. Although you pretty much know if you've watched this channel what the Mannix 2 looks like, because I've had this on the table pretty much, yeah, since the very beginning of this channel. And let's see, the M4 Freak next to the Mannix 2. Super, we've already seen it, but let's just one more time here. The Recon 1 next to the Mannix 2. And how about the Code 4? So you can see a slightly smaller version of almost the same kind of style design knife from Cold Steel. Uh, let's take those Cold Steels out and I'll put it up next to the Kershaw Blur. And uh, Spyderco. Oh, let's take the Spydercos out later. Uh, one more Cold Steel. 80, whoa, 50, and I almost said 20. It's not the 80, 20. Uh, yeah. And two more. How about two more sets? We'll do the Spider Co set here of the Delica and the PM2. Manix 2 and PM2, extremely similar knives. Uh, haven't done my comparison of these two yet, I don't believe, have I? No, I haven't. And then the 940-2 versus the Manix 2. And the... Oh, I'm blanking. Oh, Azula 2 versus the Rapper Guardian 3. That's what the other comparison was. So anyways, uh, those different knife versus videos are out if you want to check those out. And if you want to see more of those, feel free to comment down below and let me know. By the way, if you like all of these knives on the table or any of these knives or whatever, just feel free to click the like button. And if you don't like the video, you know, you can click the dislike video uh, button too, if you want to be that guy. Uh, but I would encourage you to, again, comment down below with what knives you want to see more of on this channel and see the comparison uh, versus videos of, because I will be doing some more of those versus videos in the coming months, because those are a blast to do. Uh, last size comparisons, Rat Model 2 and the Rat Model 1. And then we'll just get this awkward video over with. Because I think that's about all there is to say about this. It's pretty much the Mannix 2, just lighter. 
uh, FRN handles. Oh, it's got the wire clip. I could mention that as well. Uh, but yeah, basically the same knife. Basically, probably one knife that's going to get more use than almost anything else that I own, as you will find out in the coming months. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. As always, thanks for the support. And uh, keep an eye out for some hog vlogs and some uh, knife of the week videos and some different stuff that I might be trying here coming up into 2023 as we move into year three of the hog. So yeah, cheers. See you on the next one. Hard on Gear Channel, signing off.